So, um, I never actually celebrated Halloween before in my entire life. And it's not that none of the Hong Kongers celebrate Halloween or anything. It's just that nobody in Hong Kong cares. But, you know what? Screw it. It's Halloween. Let's review a horror movie. Hey, spookity spook. What's up? It's the Culture Detective here investigating your favorite movies. And, um, yeah. I watched um, The Silence of the Lambs last night. I was like, okay, what horror movie should I watch? You know what? Let's just go with the, um, go with the most critically acclaimed one first. The Silence of the Lambs. Here we go. So, The Silence of the Lambs is a movie directed by Jonathan Demme, whom I'm not that familiar with. And it is actually a novel uh written by Thomas Harris that is being adapted into this movie and the plot is essentially this FBI Academy student Clarice Starling uh, played by Jodie Foster she's assigned to speak with a crazy psychopath cannibal who is known as the legendary Hannibal Lecter because she and other FBI agents wants to catch this serial killer who skins a woman alive by the name of Buffalo Bill. And they believe that Hannibal Lecter can help them find Buffalo Bill. So, uh, yeah, I watched this movie yesterday, last night, and I made sure, and I didn't go into this movie with any high expectations or anything. Um, I didn't think it would be that scary. I turned off all the lights. I closed all the curtains, uh, even though if I opened the curtains, it would be scarier. Uh, <laughs> um, eh, I mean, it, I'm not saying that this movie's bad. I think it's great, but it's just not as great as some people would say it is, in my opinion. I just think it's a little bit overrated. The directing is kind of plain. I don't know why did this movie win Best Director in the Oscars, but the directing isn't that great in my opinion. It's just very normal. It's just very average. Some scenes are actually pretty well directed, especially in the climax scenes. And then there are some scenes that are just... what? A, a little confusing. Like the use of close-ups in this movie. Um, for most of the time, the use of close-ups in this movie are pretty effective. It adds tension, it adds pressure, it gives this authority and, and peasant youngling or a predator versus prey kind of feeling to it. And then there's the scene towards the end of the movie where Clarice and her friend sort of tried to figure out where was Buffalo Bill hiding. And that scene has so many close-ups. And they were all looking at the camera like, Clarice, you're so clever. Thank you. You helped me too. Like, is this scene supposed to be scary or something? I don't really know. Um, another thing is that this movie isn't that scary overall. Um, I don't know why. Maybe it's because I've seen... And it's not like I've seen that many horror movies. I'm not a horror expert or anything, right? But um, this movie... I'm just not that scared. <laughs> the stakes weren't particularly high. I mean, the stakes were pretty damn high in the climax of the movie. But before that, in no point in the movie where I would be like, Oh my god, Clarice is in danger. Oh no, what what should she do? Oh no, go, go away. Like, I, I don't really feel the stakes here and there. Um, but, um, yeah, these are, I guess, the two complaints that I have with this movie. Uh, the rest of the elements in the movie are actually all pretty fantastic. Let's talk about Hannibal Lecter. He's a friggin' amazing character. Hannibal Lecter, amazing character. And originally, I thought I should, I sup I'm supposed to be afraid of Hannibal Lecter, but instead of being afraid of him, I was actually kind of rooting for him in the movie, which is actually what makes him so great, is that yes, he is a psychopath, he's a monster, he's a cannibal, for God's sake, but also you kind of root for him because he turns out to be a bit of a gentleman, a really smart gentleman, 
who has his reasons and his own logic, has his own agenda, wants to be free, you know, wants to look at the views, and you just kind of want to see him win a little bit, I guess. And the building of his character is ingenious as well. Before he is even shown in the movie, we have characters around Clarice Starling telling Clarice, you know, oh, He's a monster. He's terrible. Oh, look at this nurse. Look at how how much Hannibal screwed up this nurse, you know, screwed up her, her face, you know. Oh my god, like, this Hannibal guy, he, he ate this other person's liver, and he's crazy, you know, he's killed so many people. And then we see the first scene where Hannibal actually showed up in. And he's just a really well-mannered gentleman. And also with the hallway in the in the um, asylum, I guess, asylum prison, the insane asylum prison. Like, the more Clarice goes further into the hallway, the crazier the prisoners get. So at first, it's just a guy sitting in a corner. And then afterwards, it's a guy, <gasps> like, acting like a monkey. And then at the very end, it's Hannibal. And he's just standing in the middle of the room, like a total friggin' gentleman. And that is just amazing. And every single scene after that point with Hannibal Lecter in it are also very, very fantastic. Um, you know, just the way he speaks. Anthony Hopkins totally killed it as Hannibal Lecter. The very, the, the very possessive look and the very dragged sort of wordings, his delivery of the lines, and uh, the way he speaks very nicely and logically, and then he would suddenly say something very perverted, and not because he's a pervert, but because it, it pisses people off and he wants to see that kind of way. And uh, yeah, amazing character building, amazing um, character in general. And then we have the actual villain of the movie, Buffalo Bill, who's a serial killer who goes around and kills a bunch of women and sort of skin them alive because he wants to become a woman himself. Um, I know that the 90s isn't that progressive, but uh, I guess the way the movie portrays uh, people trying to change their sex uh, is freaky. Maybe not the most updated view on, on sexuality, um, but, uh, yeah, Buffalo Bill is a really creepy character at the end of the day. Now, Buffalo Bill, I don't think he's that scary. Maybe it's because I've seen scarier people in horror movies and in movies in general. There are horrifying characters that, that make my skin crawl, even in movies and TV shows that are not horrors. Um, but Buffalo Bill, he's dangerous. That's all. Um, and also, he's not a psychopath. He's just delusioned, uh, delusional in that he thinks that if he kills a bunch of women and get their skin, maybe he can turn into a woman himself. But um, at the end of the day, he still has his reasons. He still has his thought process and all that. Uh, it's just that he's so far deep into the oh, I need to kill women for their skin, rabbit hole, and he just can't get out of it. And um, he's actually a bit of a sad character as well, honestly, though I don't find him that scary. Other than that, I think the climax is uh, very suspenseful and uh, effectively so. The way it's all happening in the dark and we are in Buffalo Bill's POV uh, with his night vision goggles and we see Clarice just trying to touch the walls like oh my god where am I that that scene is pretty damn suspenseful again not the scariest scene I've ever seen not the scariest but it's still very effective and I like that and the movie overall is also pretty accessible and well paced there uh, there aren't that many filler scenes at all and um, yeah it's it's pretty good it's a pretty great movie yeah there's also um, this character, the side character, who I thought should have some sort of ending in the story, which he kind of did, but not really on screen. And that's the um, 
main doctor in the insane asylum. He's being a total asshole. And um, Hannibal Lecter's like, I gotta kill this guy. And <laughs> that's kind of funny, I guess. So uh, yeah, The Silence of the Lambs. It's a little overrated, but nonetheless, I still think it's a very great movie. And uh, yeah, I'm saying The Silence of the Lambs is a movie worth watching. And I'm giving it a strong 8 to a light 9 out of 10. Maybe a strong 8. 9.0. You know what? I'm going to bargain with myself. 9.0. Uh, so, have you seen The Silence of the Lambs? From 1 to 10, how much you rate it? Like, if you like it, and subscribe if you want more. And thanks for watching.